So we've gotten settled in our spot here at Cold Springs Winery. Go, 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 go. Clean, clean. Chad does not do well in crowds. In crowds. No! Oh yeah. Hey there friends, we're the Browns. Chad, Katie, Addison, Kenya, and Milo. We live for love and adventure. In November of 2017, we sold our house and most our possessions in pursuit of simplicity and freedom. Two months later, we bought a 2001 Bluebird school bus to make our home. After building out the bus for six months, we've been on the open road full time. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. We're stoked for you to join our journey and hope you enjoy watching our videos as much as we love making them. So hit subscribe and enjoy the adventure. So we just uh, just pulled into a winery just outside of Boise, Idaho. This will be our second official stop. Uh, and it is awesome. This is winery up on the hill, out in the middle of the fields, right on the Snake River. It's called Cold Springs Winery, outside of Boise and uh, they take RVs one at a time. So if it's not, if nobody's using it for that night, they'll let you come in, do a little wine tasting, and uh, have a good time. Hey Mai, what? where are we? Um, Ooh, that's actually. Where are we? What are we surrounded by? Grapes. Grapes? What is this place? It's a grape farm. A vineyard. Vineyard. Vineyard, right? So we've gotten settled in our spot here at Cold Springs Winery. Kids are just playing in the sprinklers. No big deal. Got Buster Brown the bus parked right there. Getting some steaks on the grill. This is absolutely amazing. I can't even believe we have the opportunity to stay here. So cool. Getting ready to pull out and Bill, the owner here, super cool guy, uh, is gonna give us a tour of the winery and the and the process of fermentation and all that kind of stuff. So should be pretty cool. They're not even open today, but he's opening up just to give us a tour. So that's cool. So I made a pretty rookie mistake or <laughs> dumb mistake I guess uh, not really rookie I should have known even without ever towing a vehicle before but I've got the detachable lights for our Jeep to tow with and I put the wrong blinkers on the wrong sides of the Jeep so we just pulled up to get gas and somebody was behind us and pulled in and said hey you're when you're turning right your left blinkers on and when you're turning left your right blinkers on so I've got to go back and get those switched um, and we're feeling for the first time in on the road and uh, diesel is what 30 cents more expensive than it was at home so good gas is fuels getting more expensive that's exactly what we wanted here's a little taste of uh, what full-time travel actually looks like hello 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 hi so we've been parked in an industrial park hello. for the past four hours ish while we did some grocery shopping, yeah. while I worked, while I worked, and uh, the kids hung out in the bus and entertained themselves and went a little bit crazy. Um, so if you think it all looks like glamour and beautiful spots to stop and all that kind of stuff, this the reality is starting to sink in right now as we um, sit in this industrial park in the in Boise, Idaho 
and uh, I work and we take care of some some business that has to be taken care of until our next place opens up to us. So uh, anyway, just wanted to share what things are really like. We don't ever want to paint a picture that everything is just absolutely glamorous and everything goes perfect and we're always exactly where we want to be. Just part of the process. We are making our way to Bend, Oregon and uh, but we are discovering that we only like to drive about 150 miles per day um, and I'm not in love with consecutive driving days. <laughs> So not picky at all. I'm very low maintenance. Um, so what that's causing us to do is to stop about every 150 miles, find somewhere to stay. And we've been lucky enough to find a few cool places. So right now we're posted up at a place called Kelly's Orchard. Kelly Orchards in um, a place called Weezer, Idaho, which is like central uh, west Idaho just right on the Oregon border. And uh, we've been here, we got in last night. Really, really cool people. And uh, we're gonna go check out their neighbor's Cobb House, which I had never heard of before in my life. But apparently it's mud and straw and some cool mixture that hardens and makes an awesome house. So they said we can come take a look at it and show it on our channel. These are super cool people, really young couple with two young kids. We're living in Atlanta and decided they just wanted a slower, more meaningful life. And so they're out here in the fields of Idaho, farming and building their house. But this is where we're, this is where we're posted up in this orchard. What up, bud? Hi, these are my first braces. Oh, those are your braces? Yeah. Oh, wow. Cucumber braces. So there you have it. We're gonna go check it out. I'm excited to see their house and then we're gonna explore this area a little bit. Building. All right, so these are our friends Jeff and Faye. They're building this rad cob house. So why? Why are you guys building a cob house? I'll try. Um, we just, I don't know, I think we just like the, I, I personally like the idea of building with what's available. And once it's up, it's it's not harming anything. It blends up with the environment. It's, you know, it's a it's just a natural, healthy way to live. You know, it doesn't have to be super expensive. It depends on how custom right. you get. So we like that. Um, and you can get a lot more creative with, you know, your structure and your wall shapes and all that kind of stuff. And then also, yeah. we just like doing projects together. So we thought, well, let's just do one that will take a really long time. And, and we, we like punishing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Glutton for punishment, right, for yeah. sure. Right. Yeah, but we, I mean, we wouldn't do it anyway for that one and just, it's just basically straw bales with mud around it and that's, and that's yeah. it. This is all earth and plaster with our neighbor's cow manure and horse manure in it wow. for a binding. Yeah, and yeah. It's, keep it all tight, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it's like good enough for the inside of a pump house. Yeah. If this were on the inside of our house, we would, it, you wouldn't be able to see these specks of clay. Oh, okay. Um, it wouldn't slough off at all. But this is a pretty good example of did you and you guys did this? Mm -hmm. So I did you, it. I mean, yeah. you smoothed it and yeah. made it all yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. So what's the full mixture? Like, what's everything for that's the, in it for the plaster? Yeah, for the plaster. That's so the plaster is, is sifted sand, yeah. sifted clay, sifted straw, um, horse manure, which does not need to be sifted because horses chew things up very uniformly, yeah. and cow manure, which um, is super gross, but is a great binding agent. Yeah. <laughs> that is so no, cool. It doesn't stink though. No. no. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. And you're mixing it with the tractor? Yeah, so we do what's called impact mixing. Uh huh. When you're doing it with the foot with your foot with your feet. Uh-huh. Um you just you lay out a tarp and you're stomping on it and you know, and flipping it, stomping on it, flipping it. Yeah. With this, it's the same thing, same principle. You're just lifting it up and you know, letting gravity yeah. you know, impact it and mix it together. So, so yeah, it just. You so she just in. put that wall up this yeah, morning. She just put that, up this morning. that is so cool. Yeah. We had to build all the cabinets beforehand and then build around them. 
So this is like a cavity for the cabinets? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, like basically like a cavity for the cabinets. And when, when we like fully move in, we'll get this straightened out and like put yeah. the around it and stuff. And, you know, the passive solar and the thermal mass and the, you know, using straw bales to insulate your home. I mean, it's just all amazing that you can do so much more with very simple materials that you can pay, you have to pay, you know, so much more money oh, yeah. to do, you know, artificially and pollute the environment and, you know, so. You know, so I, I cool. Just, I, right, I don't see why you wouldn't go another way when you can do something like this. And this is actually getting easier to do. Yeah. So. Well, you guys have had a lot of practice. Yeah. <laughs> More than we'd like. <laughs> it's, but, it's figuratively cool and it's literally it really, cool. Really cool yeah. It is awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks for showing us yeah, around, guys. Go, 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 go. Clean, clean, clean. Stop. No pressure, stop. No pressure. Yes, A new minute for every quarter? That's a steal. It's Jeep washing day because we drug it down a 20 mile road in the dust. So we're getting her all cleaned up so we can get her dirty again. Oh. I'm the washer here. You're the washer here? Yeah. And what's your name, washer? My name is Gerald. Gerald? Gerald. Gerald? Yeah. Gerald the washer? Yeah. Okay. Good work. Good work, Gold. children. <laughs> are you children washers or are you elves? Elves. You're elves? Yeah. Okay. One thing we noticed the other day, and I forgot to film it before we cleaned the Jeep, but I'll show it again when it's there, is that the bus's exhaust goes straight out the back and it sprays the exhaust right onto the front of the Jeep right here. So the whole front of the Jeep was just black with diesel exhaust. So we've got to find something to modify the exhaust um, so that it's not spraying all over the, the Jeep. So we're in Boise, Idaho on the Boise River and uh, we're gonna float the river. We're gonna, there's a ton of other people doing it. They're all getting in down there. But uh, yeah, this is our first time. We heard that this is what locals do on 4th of July and I think pretty much every soul in, Bo in Boise is here doing this with us. So we're gonna check it out and see what it's all about. What you doing, hon? I'm about ready to pass out. Blowing up these rafts. You're lightweight. Halfway through. Lightweight. Chad. Yeah. Chad does not do well in crowds. I don't mind crowds. Chad minds crowds. Don't let him lie to you. I don't mind crowds. He doesn't like people. How was it getting started? It was hectic. It's terrible. There's like a million people here, nowhere to park except for miles away. And we were we pulled over to unload all of our stuff and we had this police officer just screaming at us. I'm giving all these people tickets. And if I get to you before you're gone, you're gonna have a sixty dollar citation. Threatened to take people to jail for dropping people off on the side of the road. It was it was pretty intense. Very patriotic. I was not happy. Yeah, right forward, left back. Poor guy. He was probably sad about being out in the heat giving people parking tickets. Poor guy. On the 4th of July. Just doing some regular old cherry gleaning. Can you tell us what we're doing here, Addison? Picking rotten cherries. P picking rotten cherries? Yeah. Why are we picking rotten, rotten cherries? Um, because cherry season is over. <laughs> Good explanation. Cherry! <laughs> hey. 
Why? Trying to poop it. Why are the sprink? Why are the sprinklers on? Cause the water is on. It just. It just. Oh, I mean um. I think they're watering the Milo. No. Oh yeah. I'm going in. I'm going in. Yeah. Alright, we are picking the remains of rotten old cherries. We're gleaning. We're gleaning in an orchard that has the sprinklers on. <laughs> what are we doing? We have found five cherries so far. Five cherries. There's okay. one for each of us. Oh, dear. Oh. That's a high one. Oh, come on. <laughs> Allison, explain to what's going on here. Explain the situation. I'm trying not to itch my bug bites. So you're cupping your hands over your nose? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We have some. You guys are insane. <laughs> we have like some. That many. That's hilarious. I have three. Some's more than none. I have no idea what we are doing. This is absolutely nuts. Katie is crazy. All right, um, how did everybody fare? Mm. Mm. We're just gonna eat these cherries right here, right now. I mean, why not? We're hungry from running. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any, Addison? I don't wanna eat them until they're washed. They're washed. They're washed from the sprinklers. Come on, she persisted. Mm. We'll tell them. I'm bleeding. I'll pick you up on your <laughs> and so I can't eat it. Why? Because I'm bleeding. Because you're bleeding? Come on, you weirdo. Eat it. How is it? Not buggy. Not buggy. That's good. good. It's juicy. Careful, Kenya, you got some dripping down your chin. Mom? Mom? Last was it, one for you. Well, was it worth it? Mom. It's worth it. Mom. Sure. Hashtag worth it? Always. <laughs> so we got up at first light this morning and uh, are leaving our friends in Weiser, Weiser, Idaho. Sweetest people building the comp house. Uh, and uh, we're, we're making our way. We're trying to do most of our driving in the early morning hours because getting so hot. It's supposed to be 101 today and I just don't want to be driving in that heat for both my comfort and uh, our sweet bus here. So, uh, so much thanks to our hosts Jeff and Faye and Kelly Orchards. They were awesome. So fun to play with. So fun to learn about their house and their way of life out here and we're stoked for them and uh, yeah, on to the next adventure. Wow, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week and remember to love always and adventure often.